when you kick flip and your foot just goes completely weak and kicks back like this. This is a prime photo of Mob. <laughs> On the other hand, you have a flick, which Penny and Reynolds and a lot of people have. That's when the foot comes up, kicks out, and the board's a perfect kick flip. That's the basic explanation of Mob right there. Yeah, but Andrew's like, man, he's just such a character. Like, he's just so funny. He's this and he's that. And so as he shows up at the airport, he's got like his beanie and, you know, his flannel on. It was like a kid that's just like into Wu-Tang or something, a little like rough kid from Connecticut. And he's just so into De Niro, just so into quoting things, but just, man, loves to skate. Jim was just, I wish, I wish I could explain to you just how funny he was. Like that movie, The Fan with Robert De Niro, you know, where he's, he's a baseball fan and he would say things like, I'll hit your head into a million pieces. Like you'd be out skating, a security guard would be kicking you out and Jim would be like, I'll hit your head into the outfield, I'll do this. And everything he said, there's a 411, and you guys might remember this, it's old. There's a guy called Klaus Jeter Spa and he used to have a funny name. And in his interview, he just says, I'm Klaus Jeter Spa. And he goes, <laughs> my name is Klaus Peter Spahn. How are you? <laughs> and so Jim would walk around saying this to people all the time. It was like, it was just, it was just funny for me to see people like enjoying their lives. And I just enjoyed the company. And I just knew we loved, it was like our own little religion, you know? Yeah, he lived also there at the barrio. This is before everyone lived on water. So it must have been around then. He wrote for Birdhouse and he, probably stay in that house too. We, I would say we were probably friends immediately. Well, I mean, so we, so I watched the, the transformation of Greco, you know, from a regular, you know, uh, relatively clean cut kid, like, you know, a little East Coast kind of kid um, who grew up, you know, with like, looking up to like Tim Upson and, and some of those guys on the East Coast more. Um, and, you know, suddenly he became in, completely enamored with this like circa 1960s, 70s punk rock sort of aesthetic and really just took it. And so there's clearly like one Tamiyoto tour. We went up to up California doing a tour when it was like the inception of it and everyone on tour had known Greco from before and was kind of like all looking at each other like whoa what's happening here you know it's like because he just like his demo trick was getting drunk and falling down at the shop you know that's what kids were stoked on that's what kids like that was his move <laughs> you know it was like it wasn't like let's do something on the course it was get wasted and cause a scene at the shop and all the kids are just eating it up. I remember, um, you know, just after we'd been filming the end and just going to UCI, and you gotta realize people are skating rails, but a backsmith to me is just such a hard trick. I remember just seeing Jim just rolling up to this rail and like, you know, board sliding it. And it was like the long 10 stair. And then seeing him just come up, you know, with like fist ready to go, all cock legged and just like back, all you know, on a backside smith, like just down it and going like, oh my gosh. Gregor was just, um, he's, he's like basically, my, my view of Jim is he's a genius. Like he is seriously one of the smartest people I've ever met. Um, back in the day, when Rodney Mullen would come through for demos and things like that, like him and Rodney would talk about math. Like Jim was into math, and like they would have conversations about it, and they became pretty close, I think, and kept a relationship from that. Um, so I think now, even when he's referring to in videos, like he's talking about how he would text Rodney for help doing dark slides and things like that. Like I guarantee you, I wish I could see those conversations and how foot placement is set and like how the formulas are. How, like exactly, like there's a certain math with math to it, I bet, that they can relate to on that they met each other based on. It's kind of interesting to think about. Jim would love to torture Hayes. It was like, his, he would just get off on that. It'd be like the daily thing to torture Hayes. He loved it. Jim was really hyped on that, like messages that Hayes would leave, talking about like he had the weed or something. Jim would be like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> Call the car. Say, Greco, give me a call. I got your back on the corner. 
The hijinks, till this day, but especially back then, just push that hijinks over the edge. See how much like hijinks you could really get. I I wasn't like I didn't I don't have a piss drums tattoo like I wasn't embedded in it as much as them but like those two were like the same like they I think that they would basically wake up and they, I may be talking shit but it seemed like they would wake up and put on gear to try to one up each other almost like and I'm I'm making this up obviously I don't know but it seemed like that from afar but like it was amazing to watch it was like watching like a movie play out, you know? Hanging out with those two together was like watching two brothers, you know? It was, it was constantly laugh, constant laugh. Well, I think everyone was like really good mates, but you know, them two seemed to hit it off. And then they had the, the one weekend where they went to Arizona and they came back and they were called the Piss Drunks all of a sudden. Bulala left looking like Tom Penny and he came back looking like Sid Vicious. And I was like, what's going on here? And he was like, yeah, rock and roll. And I was like, well, fucking whatever you want to do, mate. You know what I mean? Like. I just remember one day, and Ali and Jim had just been so hooked. Man, the Ramones, and like we're in a band, and we love Sid Vicious, and like everything was from like, you know Pabst beer to like vodka and like Johnny Thunders, and then you know Titus pants with stitchings and like Titus leather shirts. So how, I, from what I remember, me and Jim were watching these old punk videos from from the late 70s seeing like and we're just listening to to all that the, the music the punk and seeing what they were wearing and that was not baggy blue jeans and white t-shirts so just one day let's we'll start wearing that and that's what we did people thought we were joking at first i think but we didn't give a fuck, so maybe that opened some some kind of a acceptance for people to understand, like, oh, you don't, everyone don't have to look the same, so look, they're doing it, so I don't know. Jim, at one point, when uh, when when Greco and, and Balala had like really got into uh, wearing tight pants, Jim got obsessed with calling this shit uh, rocking a side pipe. It's like when you're basically you got the tightest fucking pants on and your 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 wiener is like you could almost see like a bulge like to the side or something. It's like the Ramones would fucking <laughs> rock that shit all the time. But he was like obsessed with like rocking a side pipe. Jim just I remember Fernandez, I mean there's a spot right up here and you have to ollie up a cab and ollie onto something and ollie down. And like Fernandez is like, dude, I could totally ollie this. And then just to mess with him, dude, there's no way you could do this. And it was like this, this week-long fight of there's no way you could do it. So finally when Chad's drunk, they're challenging him to come out and ollie this gap. And he didn't do it, and owes him money. So that's the kind of, Jim would just set people up, but it was just his naming people. I mean, the amount of times we were out and getting into fights with people, or I was going through drama with people, skating spots. And it was definitely a couple of times for me and Jim, I remember like, when we first lived in the first apartment and we were getting rowdy or something. I remember this one time we like had enough of each other. We're like, okay, let's go in our room and have a fight. And we go in and like close the door, like, what's up? And it's like, and then we're like trying to like, but you know, I couldn't get myself to be mad. It's like, and then it's like, all right, like whatever, bro, you know, screw you. And then out, out, out the door. That was the language at the time. So, um, pretty crazy. Greco always had my back like a hundred percent. Like I loved like, and he was fucking hijinks, like, like, I'm serious, like, we, we were part, we were going to maybe the f mother's, like, the health food store or some shit, and he would smoke out front just to piss off the healthy people, you know, he was, he was, a, he's punk, like, like, sober or not, I was the drunk one, and, I, like, I, I don't do that kind of, like, I torture, like, people personally to, like, get to know them, but that's, that's my idea of, like, being a drunk and torturing, like, just testing like little things, but Jim can torture a complete stranger for no reason, and it's fucking, it's wild. <laughs> but living with him, I mean, yeah, he, he lived with Beavis' one, and he, he always had my back, so that was good.